We've had an amazing last few days together, haven't we? It's been really wonderful. And it just, it just seems like the, the presence of God just kept increasing, just as from the start, just it kept increasing. And uh, I think it was uh, Friday night, it was just such a sense of God's presence in the room. It was like, wow, we don't even leave. It was an amazing, holy time. And then last night, just prayer all over the room and people getting touched by God. It was just, oh, it was fantastic. It was just what we dream of. You know, church isn't about just coming and singing a few songs and getting a lecture. It's about encountering the presence of God because we all need his presence. And that's what I love about our guest speaker today, Marcus Steigert. He, he is a man who, who loves the presence of God. He builds his ministry around the presence of God. The things he shares don't just come from a textbook or something he's learned in some class. It's come from his own life experience. You know, uh, it's funny. I remember Randy talking to me about Marcus years ago when he, he talked about all his background, his business background, all he'd come from and what he walked away from and how he walked into ministry and how God had healed him and God, how God had touched him. I remember Randy talking about that. You, Marcus is, is a man who loves God's presence, wants to be used by God. And what really strikes me is not just the miracles he's experienced. Because if you're in pain today, he can tell you about pain. He, he knows what it's like to live in that space and find God's presence there. I love, don't you, I love real people. I love authentic people. People who say, here's where I was, my life wasn't right, but God helped me, God gave me the breakthrough. Marcus is that kind of person. But I love his humility too. He just gets out of the way so God can move, so God can use him. Would you welcome to The Crossing, Marcus Diger. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wow, um, really appreciate those words, Pastor Scott. And we, are, we are honored to be here the last few days. Our whole team has been blessed by your people, but not just your staff, not just the pastors, um, but also the body. Um, we've met quite a few of you. We've talked with you one-on-one -on -one, um, at the tables or wherever. I'm um, praying with you. We have been blessed to be here. It has been an honor to be here. I always consider it an honor to represent Jesus. It's always an honor. And it's, it truly has. I say that from the bottom of my heart. I don't just say those things. Just say those things. But it's been a wonderful time here at the crossing these last few days. And we look forward to what God's going to do here. Um, I believe that there's been some shifting and things God's been pointing out for a purpose and a reason for this next season. And so we are blessed to be a part of that. And um, I just want to get going here. I really do. I want to share something with you that's on my heart. Um, but um, I do want to just talk briefly. Um, our ministry, if you weren't here for the weekend, um, it's Monarch Ministries International. And um, we want to transform the local church and the people in the world. So um, we do twofold ministries. We equip the local church, but we also are doing them full gospel crusades in the United States, and our focus is the United States. So there is a product table out there. My son's like, you're not taking anything out? And I was like, no, I'm not. Um, but um, there's stuff out there. Everything that you buy there helps fund the crusades and helps fund these conferences because when we go and do these conferences, um, we, we literally don't charge anything when people come to the door. Um, we want to we want to equip everybody and anybody, and so it's not just it's not a normal conference. There's just no other name to call it, but um, it's literally about pressing into Jesus, and pressing into His presence, and it's not about Christians getting together and having Christian fun. I mean, we we, we need to get together and have our conferences, but um, these are just a little bit different, a little bit different focus. But um, and so you do that. And if you want to connect with our ministry, I believe there's cards out there. Pastor Nick, right there he is, um, did an amazing job talking about QR codes. You know, um, there is one on that card. You know, give it up for the QR code. <laughs> I actually saw that online um, a couple weeks ago. And I was watching that. I was like, man, you're funny. Um, I love it. Um, <laughs> so um, you could grab one of those cards and, and it'll open up a bar right there. You, it'll download all the information like a contact on your phone um, about the ministry, how to contact us, how to keep up with us. Pray for us. We're going into regions and going to areas that people are not usually don't like to go into. One of the regions that God highlighted was San Antonio, Texas. Very religious area. Um, we had a lot of demonic attacks um, on the team, on the, the ministry, on the conference. God showed up. People were healed. People were set free. People were saved. 
but there's a lot of going on. Um, New Orleans is another place that God's told us to go. Um, Brenda and I were walking down Bourbon Street. Yes, yes, we did walk down Bourbon Street. No, we didn't go um, to partake. It was during the day, but just walking down, sensing the just demonic presence, sensing the oppression and the depression that's upon that place. And it's time for the church to stop ignoring the places that we we say, oh, that's Sin City or that's whatever. And it's time for the church to take the ground back that we let the enemy steal. That's what we need to do. And, and he's highlighted um, regions all over. And yes, Pennsylvania is part of that. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're just um, going where God tells us to go. So if you want to um, get that information, follow us here. I'm going to give this to somebody so I don't, I don't play with it up here. All right. So that's out of the way. I love that. Let's get to something more important. Let's get to a joke to get my mindset. Y'all like jokes? I'm telling you, um, you, you, if you don't experience the all-out joy, you've got to check yourself. I mean, because when you're in the presence of the Lord, it doesn't matter if you have everything or have nothing. You can find joy. And no, no, no lie, and you might sound a little bit gross, but this morning I laughed so hard, I almost spit out my breakfast and shot things out of my nose. <laughs> it's the truth. That's just happened this morning. Um, the, the worship team, let's give it up for the worship team. I mean, come on. Um, wherever they're at, wherever they're hiding, bless you guys. But they're up here and they're practicing, but they're also being joyful and messing with each other and, and, and just laughing. There is joy in them. It's just so important that we have the joy of the Lord. Come on. Um, bless these guys. I, I want to, well, no, I'm going to get to you in a second. I'm sorry. No. no, let's bless them now. I think maybe it's time. All right. You know, everybody just stretch a hand out towards the little booth back here, towards the, um, the, the room that they're hiding in. I know I think Roger's hiding back there, but um, let's just bless him. Father, we thank you for these men and women that come and serve and do all these connections and make the streaming work and make the video work for the people in the gym. We just say bless their lives for serving you good and faithful servants. We love you. We bless you. We thank you. And we say, God, give them provision. Father, give them favor. Bless their lives with joy and happiness knowing that they are sending seeds out into the world that are going to send a harvest back in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You got to love your sound people. Come on. I know that we used to call them sound guys. Now they want to be called sound engineers. I mean, whatever you want to be called, um, we just got to bless those guys. And I'm kind of smart about it because I know they control my mic. So <laughs> twofold, right? All right. Here, let's get to jokes. Um, after a Sunday morning, uh, one of the uh, members of the church asked the pastor, he said, Pastor, is it a sin to go play golf on Sunday? Pastor said, Son, put a hand on the shoulder. I've seen you play. It's a sin every day. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Honest ones. Here's another one. The pastor woke up on a Sunday morning and realized it was a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, early spring day. And he decided, you know what? I just don't feel like preaching today. I want to go play golf. So he called up the associate pastor, told him, I'm sick. I just can't come in. Can you preach this morning? And the associate pastor agreed. As soon as he hung up the phone, he grabbed his golf clubs, loaded up his car, and he drove two hours away from his church to make sure no one would see him just in case someone else did the same thing. He's, he realized when he got out there, there's nobody else. He gets to the first tee and no one else is around. They must all be in church. He gets on that tee and he looks at the beautiful scenery and the golf course and the, the, the birds chirping in the sun and he's about to hit the, that first ball. Peter's up in heaven with Jesus and said, are you letting him get away with this? <laughs> Jesus said, no, I won't. Just then the pastor swung back and he hit that ball and that crack of that ball flew and that ball flew 420 yards and lands on the green, bounces and rolls into the hole. It's a hole in one. Just so you know, golf people, some people are not golf people, 420 yards is impossible. <laughs> he gets a hole in one and he's jumping up and down, screaming and everything. Peter's completely confused and says, why'd you do that? You blessed him. Jesus says, well, who's he going to tell? <laughs> Come on. Just got to love that. That would be the hardest thing. If you ever played golf and you hit a hole in one on a par four and you can't tell anybody, whew, that would be a mess. All right, shouldn't skip out on church. I do want to say this, though. You know, um, pastors, um, preachers, we're, we're all normal people. 
We are. Um, I, I've never skipped out on preaching and to go play golf, but I have skipped out on you know, I'm doing what I was um, supposed to do on a Sunday to go have back surgery. But um, I guess that's a good enough excuse. But, <laughs> but we, are, we are normal people. Um, we, we, we go through things. Um, we, we have to process things. We don't have it all figured out. Give, a, give your pastor a break. You know, we, we don't have it all figured out. We, we are trying to live this life too. We're trying to adjust too, to the surroundings, to the times, to what's going on in the world, what's going on in the body. There's, there's all kinds of things going on, right? It's been crazy. It literally, this last year was crazy for everybody. I know in different ways it has affected you, it has affected your family, it has affected your jobs in different ways. And, and I'm not, you know, I just want to talk, I only could talk about what we experienced, right? Because that's what I know. I want to be a little bit raw with you this morning. Are you good with that? Instead of a, a good normal preaching, just kind of a little bit raw of how we processed some things last year and what God took me through. And I think it might help you in processing things that you're going through right now that you can step into something a little bit different. So last year, you know, of course, we had, you know, the shutdown coming on. Um, I, was, I was pretty booked out. I had a pretty booked calendar set up, and, and um, God was moving, and, and we actually had a tremendous blessing, and, and starting the ministry, everything was just going really smooth. And then when they shut down travel, and that's the only way you make a living is travel, that's a problem, Right? And I actually thought, well, I just do because I've done all kinds of stuff. And if you, you haven't been here, you hear people are like, how do you do so much? I don't know. I can't figure it out myself. But I've done disaster mitigation, IT project management. I've remote um, managed 111 projects at one time traveling with Dr. Randy Clark. I mean, like, no joke. I've, I could do things like that. I couldn't find remote work in a time where it was remote work. Is that odd? God told me just to focus on building the ministry platforms and the app and stuff. And that's spending money, not making money. I'm like, okay, God, we're going to do that. And then right in the midst of the shutdown in about March, um, um, my daughter Paige here is driving her Jeep, and um, she had a um, visitor in her Jeep, a spider, and um, that went for her face. I mean, if you're driving and spider goes for your face, yeah, that, that might freak you out. And she, um, she was on, um, driving up to our house, and she totaled her Jeep. I mean, we couldn't even get insurance companies to go out and look at it. Even though it was in the woods, they, they couldn't go out because of COVID. They might get it in the woods. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was just craziness, right? And, and then just a couple months um, after that, um, not a couple months, a couple weeks after that, I think it was, um, um, Brenda passes out in my arms at home. I have to rush her to the hospital. I get out of the car, you know, I mean, I mean you, you got your family member. My wife's passed out on my arms and she's coming to, she's out of it. And we don't know what's going on exactly. And we, you know, rush into the hospital. I jump out of the car at the ER and they start screaming and yelling at me to get out of the car because of the COVID situation. And they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't even let her get out of the car until they asked me a bunch of questions and they're trying to ask her questions. And she's out of it. And she just passed out. They wouldn't let me go into the hospital or nothing. They wouldn't let me talk to her. I mean, no joke. It was on our anniversary, week, anniversary weekend, right? It was that weekend. I tried to send her flowers, but they wouldn't let me do that either. She lost over half her blood volume. We had thousands of people praying. They couldn't find the bleed. God completely healed her. I know he did. Um, and they couldn't find what was causing that. But this is just kind of give you an overview of what we're going through during this. You know, I mean, in, in the midst of all of this, this is going on. Now, um, back story. I forgot to tell you one, one, one of the key th points is in 2019, as I was traveling back to Clark, and we're seeing miracles everywhere. I um, go in and do a checkup or something, and the doctor noticed some, my blood work didn't look right. He did some more tests, um, did a scan on my neck, and found that I had a growth on my thyroid and, um, that needed to be biopsy, and they found out that I had Hashimoto's disease. Now, I never heard of it till this point. Um, I, I, I prayed for a lot of thyroid issues, but I've never seen, I heard of Hashimoto's disease. And, um, and so they're kind of really concerned about it because the levels and the, the, the um, progression of that and where I was at, and it was um, dangerous. But it wasn't cancerous that was on my, um, my thyroid, so they were glad about that. Um, we're going to watch it and see if we need to do surgery or not and that type of thing. And um, literally in the next three months, I, uh, in 2019, I saw three people get healed of goiters and Hashimoto's that they sent emails back that their Hashimoto's was gone, even though that I had that. I make that as a side note because you know what? You can pray for people even when you're sick. Sometimes we want everything to be perfect, perfect in our lives before we follow Jesus. Whatever it is, it could be praying for people, it could be prophesying, it could be just going to church. But you don't have to be perfect to go there. When I first time I went to church, I had no idea who God was. I went for a girl. 
No joke. I mean, that's just the honest truth. I, I, I knew um, Jesus down the street. I didn't know who Jesus was. You know? I mean, seriously. But I met Jesus. We, we, we need to just go sometimes and just do, even though we're in the midst of our battles. We, we, we get into this mindset that somehow, maybe even as we, we put that, well, how, if I could just be a pastor or a called one, then I could have this life that's just smooth of glory. Is it smooth of glory, pastor? <laughs> No. After 25 years of ministry, I could tell you this. That yes, God takes his glory to glory. That's what the word says. He takes his glory. We've had some major glorious moments. But you know what? Sometimes your glory that you're in, he wants you to get out of, there's a long to. We read that so quick. Glory to glory. I just wish the next glory. But sometimes that too might have to go through a valley. It might be going through a wilderness. It might be going to a time where, like we had last year and this year, where it, there is so much uncertainty going on. But how do we find ourselves in alignment with what God wants us to do? How do we find ourselves in alignment of the solution for what we're going through in our lives? So continue on. Right after um, um, Brenda had her, her stint in the hospital, um, we're trying to do stuff. They're trying to open up some stuff again here in Pennsylvania. You know, it was crazy. And, um, and you can't go anywhere without a mask on. And, and um, I start getting asthma attacks putting a mask on. And so go to the doctor and everything. And um, he, he comes check out. He, he said at first, you know, they do their practice. I had an adult onset of asthma, which I never had in my life. Um, asthma, hey, adult onset of asthma. I think that's how they called it. But and that wasn't the case, and the healers weren't working right and everything. And I started getting pain in my neck, and so they, they were like, well, we need to do some more tests. And then um, they did some more tests, checked my numbers. Oh, we need to do a CT. They did a CT, and they found out that I have three masses other than the mass that was on my thyroid. So I had four total masses, and they started growing and getting really painful. I mean, at one point, Brenda said she could see, like, the, the skin stretching. She could notice the difference. Uh, of my neck is pushing out. It's very painful, painful to talk. I was on these breathing treatments, these machines, um, doing this stuff, um, you know, to, uh, so it could get my throat open enough from the swelling to get air into my body. And in the midst of this, we're still doing ministry. I mean, I even preached once where, um, you know, I, I had to go after I preached every services, I think at the three in one morning, and I had to go and do a treatment and then come back to preach again. Because God said, Go. I mean, you know, and sometimes we just got to listen to what God, God says, stay, don't go, then I wouldn't have gone. But I have, you know, the, the, the thing about all of this, I want you to realize that one is we're all normal. We go through it too. We go through it too, but we have to learn to trust in God. And even with all my past and all the things I've seen God do, and, and I'm, I, I'm still learning and growing in what God wants me to do now. We can't get stuck on the old. A good example is that is Peter. And, and when Peter is um, in the boat with the disciples and they think there's a ghost walking on the water and it's Jesus and he says, Lord, if it's you, call me out there. And he walks on water, right? It's an amazing story. And I love that story of faith walking on the water. But the next time that you know, he's in the boat and after Jesus died, he's in the boat and they're fishing and they don't catch anything all night and Jesus is walking along the shore. Hey, y'all caught anything? No, throw the net on the other side. So they do it. And then Peter realizes that's the Lord. And if you read the scripture, he puts on his coat and jumps in the water. And you, you ever swam with a coat on? Like he literally thought he was going to walk on water. But sometimes God doesn't have us do the same exact thing every time. Or we got to learn where we're at. But with me and this, I mean, we, we were going through this storm and going through it. And I want you to turn just real quick. I want to point out something um, in Mark 5. To get to the scripture, but turn to Mark 5. I think it's Mark 5. I know where I'm going right here. <laughs> yeah, Mark chapter 4, sorry, 35 through 41. That's where we're going to be. I want to read this story real quick just to point out our mentality in this, but then also how we're growing and learning in this too. Because we can have the concepts and the, the very foundations of the scripture and word of what God is showing us one time, but then God wants to take us to another level of understanding of how to deal with a situation with the word a different way in our lives. We, we, we can't always say God is in this box. And this is the only way he does things. This is the only way he heals. This is the only way he delivers. We, we, we got to understand that God can move in different ways at different times in our lives. So 
one of the things that you, you'll notice um, as I tell these stories, there is, there is a piece about us that people don't quite understand. Now, when I found this out and I had that scan, of course, I know a lot of famous healers um, that move in the healing ministry, that and they have a healing evangelists, not healers, healing evangelists, but I know, and they're praying for me, and we're having our pastor pray for me, and we're, we're going through this the right way. We're, we're asking people for prayer. We're praying. But people will come up and, to Brenda and say, are you okay? It, was, it wasn't a ton of people that knew, but there's some people because it's COVID shutdown. I mean, how, how many people do you talk to, right? And are you okay? And she'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. Like your, 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 your husband has masses, you know, that they're worried about the doctors panicking actually about my insurance company was fighting with everything about getting me into the surgeon and all this stuff was going on. And he's in a panic mode about it and we're okay. How is that possible? No, was it kind of scary? Yeah, it's kind of scary, you know, thinking about it. Well, what if it's cancer? What is this? What is that? What if God is in control? You know, I mean, we, we could listen and, and don't do this. If, if you have some kind of symptom, stop Googling it. <laughs> you Google it, you will die. <laughs> and you stubbed your toe when you started. I mean, like, I mean, seriously, uh, just don't, don't listen to Google. I mean, uh, Google doctors. I don't know. Anyway, there is that out there. I heard of it. I was like, wow. Okay, we're going to read it. I'm going to explain why we stay in peace here with Mark chapter 4. If you start in 35, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. Sorry, I only put part of that there. I meant to do this. Um, let's go. He said to them, let's go across the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took with him in the boat. Um, they took him with them in the boat and just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And then their great windstorm arose. And the waves were breaking into the boat, so the boat was already filling. I mean, imagine that. You're in a boat, and it's filling with water. Now, their boats are not like big boats, and our boats are, you know, wooden boats. I mean, but they're fishermen. I mean, these guys are used to this kind of stuff, aren't they? But this is panicking them. But there he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up. I'm going to stop there. I know you know the story, right? But I want to make the point here. Okay, and, and, and you know the story. They woke him up, and Jesus gets up, and you know, calms the storm. Peace be still. We have a peace be still thing out there. I love peace be still. I love that we could calm storms. We have stories of that. But I want to stop right here in the midst of this, this story because one is Jesus told them to get in a boat and go to the other side. So if you have a direction from God on something, that means you're going to make it there. Do you think for one second that Jesus was surprised by the storm? No. Do you think he was surprised by their panic? I know that there's been a lot of preaching about the ye of little faith and all this. Or how long, you know, I mean, I, I want to focus on this. I believe that Jesus is teaching us something here. That you can literally know, one, God has sent you somewhere. And you can know that you're going to get there no matter what. You can even know that there's going to be troubles. And we talked about the peace and, and that Jesus talks about in John 14, um, that you know, you're going to have troubles in this world, but he does not give it to us as the world gives. He gives us peace. Don't let our hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. So we know we're going to have troubles coming. We can have a peace like Jesus that we can find rest in the storm. Amen. That we can have comfort in the storm. I know it sounds crazy, right? It sounds crazy of all this stuff going on and all this mess and then there's financial issues and there's all kinds of stuff going on at one time, but you can have peace. You can have joy. James says, count it all joy when the trials and tribulations come. <laughs> I know that's hard, but you can have the shalom of Jesus in your life if you focus on what he's doing. That's what we do. We focus on what he's doing. But in the same time, you have to know what God is doing so you can align yourself up for the provision and the answer to the storm. And the same time that we need, we need to understand there's different ways that God's going to work. And it might be one way with that one situation that you deal with, but the next situation you're going to deal with, he wants you to deal with in a certain way. 
And for me in this situation, I'm thinking about it. Like one, I know anointed people that have healing that are praying for me. I Dr. Randy Clark's calling me up every day on the phone while it was shut down. I mean, we couldn't be in, not supposed to be in each other's houses and all that. And, and he was calling me up and he's really concerned. And, and we got all these people praying, 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 you know, and, and, and then I'm also this. I mean, one is like, um, you know, people have said, you know, Bill Johnson called me a lightning rod for healing. Um, Dr. Rodney Clark talks about he's never seen as many creative miracles than when the markets minister in the last two years that he, I traveled with him, all this thing. And th those are great things people say about you. And they sometimes kind of puffs you up a little bit. I always try to keep it down. Like, no, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He's the one doing it. It's not Marcus, you know. But you got to start thinking about that, though, when there's, you got this situation going on. Like, you know what, God? I'm anointed. I've seen tumors disappear. You've done it in front of my eyes for other people. I've seen all kinds of bones growing out. I mean, it's literally, I mean, I'm not just talking about a few. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of people being healed. God, I know you heal. And it's easy to start standing a kind of on my own strength, on my own anointing, and think, I've got this. And I was there for a little bit. And that's not a good place. It's standing on my old knowledge and not growing. What did I say the other night? If you're not growing, you're dying. If I would have stayed in that place, I don't know what would have happened exactly. But I stayed in this place of, I know, God, I know that you heal. Nothing's changing. This is getting worse. I was, I was actually set up to go to um, the doctor again because he wanted me into, um, to see a surgeon and have surgery right away. I had, I had one of the voc um, uh, masses was on my vocal cords. It was getting hard to speak. Um, literally, it was just getting really painful. I'm not sleeping at all. I'm trying to use breathing machines at night to get air into my lungs. I mean, it's just getting crazy. I'm like, God, I know you heal. I know that you can take care of this. I mean, but it's, it's like almost to the point of where this is very dangerous. What's going on? Where do I need to line myself up, Father? I'm praying this. And I hear him say, enter my courts. I think, okay. The impression. Enter my courts. So, you know, as uh, it was like at 2.30 in the morning, right? God likes to wake me up in the middle of the night. Anybody else do that? God wakes me up in the middle of the night. Um, sometimes I'm like, okay, God, can this wait till morning? I'm tired. Um, and, you know, um, then it's really, you know, when he really wants me to get up, I get up and I just go and I just start praying um, or, or start worshiping or just start listening um, um, what he wants me to do. But um, God really woke me up and he, he told me, he goes, you know, I want you to enter my course. Well, of course, I'm going to read to you the scripture, but you should know Psalm 100, right? It should. When you hit, enter my courts, it, it hits your head. We should have the scriptures um, coming up um, to us. And, and we go, oh, yeah, um, that's what happened to me. And about 2.30 in the morning, I'm sitting there. I'm like, Psalm 100. So I'm going to read the psalm. And, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to be the good Christian about it. But, you know, and, and just, just read it and be, be joyful about it. And, you know, even not pray, you know, right? And I said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Psalm 101. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that I am Lord, he is God. It is he has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give him thanks and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is a powerful psalm, and I know that we've preached it all kinds of different ways. Um, I've done it myself. I'm sure Pastor has preached it. It's actually in some of the stuff that you repeat and you say constantly. But we literally, the thanksgiving and praise. Enter my courts is the only word I got. I'm like, enter your courts. So thanksgiving and praise. So God, I want to enter your courts and thanksgiving and praise. What do I need to do there? See, when you're in a situation, sometimes we just want the answer for our, our problem. How often are our prayers more about what God could give us than what God could do with us? Position us, place us in the right mindset. I mean, we, we want God, just give, 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 God, I have these problems. If, we, if our prayer time is all about, God, here are all my issues, send the answer, it turns God into a vending machine. We just want, 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 want. Give, 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 give. But God's like, wait, there, there's a different approach to getting your answer. There's a different placement. And I believe that's where God's taken us the last couple of days is this the different placement of holiness, of repentance. 
How do we align ourselves up for miracles, signs, and wonders? We need to be in his presence. How do we align ourselves up to be in that place where nothing can stop me, nothing can come against me, as the Romans describes to us in chapter 8, and being in Christ Jesus? Well, we had to be in Christ. What was Christ about? What was Jesus about? He was all about the Father, doing the work that the Father called him to do. He, only, he said, I only do what the Father, I see the Father do. How do we align ourselves in that mentality, in the storm? with thanksgiving and praise. We still forget it sometimes. Even with our worship now, we, we've taken our worship to a level where it's more about being entertained than praising our Lord. It's no, more about the newest, greatest song. Oh, they're doing the song over again. You know what? I think we actually need to get back to like some of the older songs and even the hymns and some of the um, um, songs after that where it was scripture being sung out. You know, we, we, we change and shift, and we got to shift our, the, the way that the gospel is delivered. And I get that. I understand that. I'm not knocking the worship team or any team. I love new worship. I listen to new worship. I love Bethel music, to Hillsong, to Maverick City, and these guys I listen to. But I still listen to old music. I still listen to even the really, I'm going to say really old, and you're going to say that's not that old. Like, you know, you go all the way back to like the, um, you know, casting crowns. Whoa, that's, that's old. <laughs> like, like my kids, my kids would be like, what? Who? You know, I mean, we, we, we consumer everything that to the point where we just pass it over. Like we can't be consumers with worship, with praise. Our praise needs to be unto the Lord. Our praise needs to be about coming to him and just loving him because you know what? He loved us. That we can have the heart set, that mindset, that we are here on a Sunday morning to encounter our God, but also come to our God and love him, praise him. Sometimes we need to stop and just say, you know what, I can't ask any more for me. God, I want to ask and praise you. Can I just praise you? Can I just praise you? How about just thanking them? Not, not just thanking for what he's done for you, but just thanking him for being God, a good father. Thanking him that he loves us so much. I mean, like, like literally that, that the father in heaven has a plan and a purpose for you because he saw you. Thank you for seeing me, father. Thanking Jesus. For, you know, Jesus knew what he had to endure before the beginning of time. Before the tree was grown, that would become the cross. He came knowing the pain and the suffering that will take you to the place that when you're praying, your body stressed so much that you're sweating blood. He knew before the beginning of time, but still he came because of you, because of me. Just thanking him. I'm saying, I just want my answer now, God. No, stop. How do we enter his courts? With thanksgiving and praise. You know, if we turn to um, Revelation, and um, I'm just going to read it real quick to you because I don't misquote it. But 2021, um, I believe it is, right? Did I say it right? I think I did. Um, 2021, and um, it says, And the 12 gates were 12 pearls, each gate made of single pearl. I want to talk about gates real quick. Enter his courts, enter his gates with praise. I want to talk about gates. It says the 12 gates, praise. They're single, they were made of pearls. A single pearl. Can you imagine that though? If you go through a huge gate, that's a huge pearl, right? It's amazing. I, I, was, I, I was processing this, um, not as a message, just processing in my own life. And I heard Bill Johnson talking about this. I was in Bethel and talking about the gates. I was like, man, that's so good. Isn't Bill Johnson so good? If you don't listen to him, listen to him. Um, it's so good. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm processing. Um, and so if you think about a giant pearl, I just, I want to see it. I want to see a giant pearl. That'd be awesome. Um, but you think about what is a pearl? 
a pearl starts with a grain or an irritant that's inside of the, was it clam muscle? I can't remember, clam oyster. And starts with it as an irritant. As a situation, it turns into something beautiful that is sought after by man. Come on. Like, I mean, if we think about that in, in retrospect, our situations that are, seem so hard right now can be turned into a pearl of praise. It can be turned into a gate that we could go through. Instead of whatever situation you're going through right now, here's another way to think about it. You're going through a situation like right now, like we're going through, um, and I, I was going through all that. Physical. I started thanking him for everything he's done Good. over my life. Good. Taking me out of the mess I was in. Out of the pain, out of the heartache, all the hatred. Taking me through a time and time again. I mean, I could, I could spend all day talking about time and time again where I've made a mess and he's taking me out of it. Where the world's coming against us, our injury or whatever has come against us and God has guided us through it. These are pearls of praise. Thanking him for these pearls that I have in my life. They are a gateway into his courts. The kingdom of heaven at hand, what does that mean? When you enter a place where you have no pain, no disease, no, that's the kingdom of heaven. I believe, um, you know, and, I'm, and you know, Dr. Clark te will teach this too, and um, uh, Bill Johnson, that we see the kingdom of heaven at hand sometimes right now. When we're seeing all the healing and the miracles and signs and wonders and whatnot, and Jesus moving, and then sometimes we're not seeing it in situations. We want the kingdom all the time. That's what we're pressing in for. I think the key of this, and this key that where God really just took me through this season, is going back to Psalms 100. If you read the Passion Translation, and I'm not going to get in translation arguments here, and whether it's a, you know, it is, but I, I love Brian's heart in this, and describing things in just a different verbiage, different language. But it says in Psalm 100 that praise is the password to his gates. It's the password to his gates. I like to just add thanksgiving and praise. Because he said, enter the gates with thanksgiving and praise. That's the password into the kingdom of God. That is the place that we can enter in into a place where we can know that we're with God, that all the rest of this world, all the rest of this junk can just be washed away. And it's all about his presence. That's why I, I, I just think that sometimes we get so focused on these perfect bodies in heaven and all this stuff. But you know what? I don't think any of that's going to matter because of the awe, the wonder, the glory of God. That we won't even think about those things. That we just be in so much praise that holy, 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 holy is the only word we can manifest out of our mouths because he is so holy. Instead of just going and saying, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's all I was doing. Thank you. I, I went through a bunch of stuff that I've gone through. Thank you, God, for taking me through that. Remembering them. I, I think we need to get back to the uh, most. I have got some things. Like in my office, I do. I have next to my desk, I, I got a cane. I used to only be able to walk with a cane. I've got that sitting there. Um, I have a back brace in our garage. But, you know, I mean, like, like we need to get back to like the ways of old where they used to build monuments for what God did. Even if it's something small that you keep around your office or whatever, to remind you of the victory of the pearl that you have through Christ Jesus. Amen. Because the enemy is trying to distract you with the current problem. But if we focus on our Lord and what he's done for us and get thankful and start praising him, the current problem seems so small. Even when it could be cancer. Even when it's a prognosis, this is the worst thing I've seen. In the midst of this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going through this praise thing, I go back to my doctor. He says, so you go, went to the um, ENT surgeon, right? I said it right. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, no, um, the insurance company won't approve it and everything. He freaked out. He actually was yelling at his staff and everything. He's got to get in now. And so they, they sent me to um, 
Hershey Medical Center two days later um, to the surgeon. And, um, and um, I'm just like, or two or three days later, I forgot what it was. But um, they sent me an appointment right away. I mean, you usually can't get appointments with these people for a long time. And he's like, he's got to be seen now. We might have to do surgery right away. That's what his mentality was. And it's kind of a little bit, oof. Okay, God, I'm trying to enter these courts. <laughs> I'm trying to be in this place to enter with, with the praise, God. I'm trying. I really am. You know, I, I know it's scary. Sometimes what we're dealing with is scary. If you watch the news, if you read anything on the media, social media, it's kind of scary out there right now. And then on top of that, you have your own personal problems. Fear is a tool of the enemy. If we could only focus on the storm, we might miss the sun. That's a whole other mess, but I want to point this out to you, that the enemy's trying to get you to focus on the negatives out there. There are positive things happening all over. There's miracles, signs and wonders happening all over. There's people that should have died on the ventilators that they should never come off it again, have come off it in miraculous ways. We have a friend that was put on a vent and um, you know, they told the, the wife literally um, that he's not going to come off for any time soon. His PIP levels or whatever it's called were, were just way off and all that. And um, we, we're all praying for him, praying for him. A week later, they take him completely off the ventilator. He's completely 100% um, better. Um, they recently released him from the hospital a couple days after that. Um, he had an encounter with um, angels while he was under, and his body was completely recovered. He was fighting off the devil and his disease while he was under. Come on. I know the media doesn't report those things. The media doesn't talk about the, the, the things, there's miracles and signs all over the place. There's things happening all the time that the media doesn't report. You know what? It's us that needs to report that. Amen. Instead of posting about negative stuff, why don't you post about what God's doing? Hallelujah. Just saying, not to point to yourself, but to point out there is positive out there right now. You know, um, if you turn over to um, Isaiah with me, I want to read this right here. This is where God took me. And... and you know, you process how you, you, you have to process, right? But um, I, I'm, you know, I'm the guy, I literally press in it. God, I just need to hear from you. Show me where you need me to go. It's not a magic thing. It's not anything. I just press in and in until I hear him. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, this is weeks. I'm, I'm literally, I'm going through, um, you know, in this Thanksgiving praise time, I'll go to church and um, I can't praise. I can't sing with my voice because it hurts so bad. But I just stand there and let the song be sung and just listen to it and repeating it in my head. Praising the Lord. Even when I couldn't sleep at night, I just get up and I put my headphones on. And listen to, I have a healing list I like. I listen to healing list. I have perseverance list. I mean, I just listen to word, or just open up the Bible and say, God, speak to me. Wherever it is, I need to position myself to hear God. That's what I do. If it's in the middle of night, it's the middle of the day, wherever it is, find your place where you can position yourself. If m music moves you, listen to more music, right? About God. I mean, if it's, if it's the word that you need, just dive in more and more and more into the word. Or if it's just sitting in peace and quiet. And just say your servant is listening. Just listen to the Lord. He will answer you. He'll tell you how to move forward. Isaiah 60, 18, violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Wow. Come on, think about that. Like literally our salvation is walls of protection around us. I heard Bill say this, a city without walls, God told him this, a city, I mean, a city without gates is unsecure. A city without gates. If you just say, I have my salvation, and that is it, it's a little insecure. This says, your walls will be salvation, and your gates will be praise. You have to have gates. We have to have praise. We have to 
set ourselves in a place where we can remember what the Lord has done. Why is it so many times in the Bible where they do that? They set up a monument, remember what the Lord's done, they repeat it over and over. They tell the story to their kids, their kids. You know, the Bible wasn't passed out in the Old Testament. It was spoken to the kids, the generation to generation. It was spoken and it was written in some places, but it was not like what we have today. We take it for granted what we have today. We have the apps. We have the Bibles. I, mean, I know at my house, in my, on my, my shelf, I have so many translations and different Bibles I've preached with over the years. And I've got all these Bibles and I've got all the apps and I like all the translations and all that. But you know what? I mean, we need to speak out what God has done. We need to speak his word out too. My walls are salvation. My gates are praise. Destruction has no authority over me. My God is above this. I literally, in this two-week span, and I'm, I'm going, you know, I have that surgeon appointment. I'm not asking God once during this time to heal me. Not once. He told me not to. Tell me not to. It's getting bad. It's hurting so bad. And every time, like, I had a trip planned to Houston, Texas, and um, right after, the day after I was supposed to go to a surgeon, I felt like I said, don't cancel it. And I didn't even know what I'm doing to get the surgeon. I don't know. They put me in surgery right away or not. I don't know. But I didn't cancel it. And I went into the surgeon, and um, they, they brought the um, RA in, and he, he came in, and he he was talking to me about everything I'll do to put a scope down my throat and all kinds of stuff right now. And, and then the surgeon makes the decision of what happens next. We do not know what's going to happen next. He got all the scans set up and all this, all this from the CT and all that. And then he, he leaves and brings it back the scope. He told me it was going to be like dental floss. It's not like dental floss. That thing is massive and tore my nose open. Huh? But, um, you know, the, the surgeon comes in and, and he goes, okay, let's, let's check the neck first. And, then he, and he looks at, he's looking at the CT and he's doing his whole thing and all that. And he goes and look and I can feel the pain still. He's like, where, where is this at? He's pushing. I was like, it's right here. It's gone. This one. It was pushing out. You could feel it on my neck. It was gone. I didn't even know it was gone. Come on. He's like, well, that must be a... a what do they call it, an uh, image blur or something like that? I forgot what they called it right there. That's, there's, there's nothing there. I was like, no, there was something there. He goes, well, let's see on the other side. The other one has shrunk down. You can feel it. It's like the size of a pea. He goes, oh, I'm not really worried about that. We'll watch that one. Let's, you know, let's get the scope down. And he, he told me about the one on my thyroid. He said, that's for the other specialist. I forgot his name. But anyway, um, he, he has to deal with that because they might remove your thyroid. And um, I was like, okay. So they put the scope down and they look at the one on my, thi on my um, vocal cords. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I mean, hey, doc, I told the other doctor to look at it, and they're going back and forth, and with this scope down my throat, and it's really uncomfortable. And they pull it out and say, okay, we need to see if we get this thing to shrink down. We need to do some medication. You need to do some speech therapy because you can't really be speaking a lot. Um, because this is an, an placement that if we really go in there, we could make it where you can't speak again. The enemy trying to take away my voice. So he had set up several appointments for the next week and, you know, that I had to do and whatnot. I was like, whatever. So I'm driving home and tell, call Brenda up, tell her, hey, one of them disappeared. I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, and, and the other one, but the, you know, the surgeon's saying this and this and this. And he's like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's just like that. I mean, like, yeah, awesome. God, God's healing it, you know? And so I just continued pressing in Thanksgiving and praise. I flew to Houston, Thanksgiving and praise. I had meetings, people, you know, meeting with, just random meetings. I mean, let's take that, that just a little side note. I was in Houston sitting with a, um, a Nazarene pastor at a um, coffee um, a table at a coffee place outside. A bunch of people around, very busy place. Um, we're just talking, and then he, he, he does, oh. I said, what's wrong? My back hurts. And he said, oh, you hurt your back? Oh, yeah, I hurt my back. And I also got this hernia thing. I said, let's pray. He got healed right there. Just saying. It doesn't matter where you're at. Just pray for people. Come on. I mean, we need to make, make a meeting to pray for people. No, we, we, I prayed for him in the coffee shop. He didn't, he didn't even really believe what was going on. God still healed him. I mean, come on. Um, you know, long story short. Yeah. Uh, we, try, we try to make it overcomplicated. If God says pray, I pray. Um, it doesn't matter where I'm at. But anyway, so I do, I'm doing my meetings and I'm doing my breathing treatments. I got, all, I got more medical stuff with me than I have like you know, clothes. I mean, honestly, um, and I'm not doing like stage meetings, so I didn't take shoes, Brenda. Uh, you know. um, but uh, yeah, Brenda says I have a shoe problem. I don't have a shoe problem. George and I are okay, right? You know, where is he at? All right, um, but um, 
I woke up one morning again. It was 4.30 in the morning. I woke up and kind of irritated. I woke up so early. I was kind of tired and it's a hotel. And, um, you know, and I'm like, ah. I said, God, you need to talk to me. <sighs> Let me listen. And I read the Bible and I listen to music. Nothing. Getting nothing at all. I'm not paying attention. That's the problem I was doing there. So I decided, oh, I'm going to go work out. And go down, get ready, get on my, go all the way down. They had the gym closed because of COVID. <laughs> not getting, not allowed to use it. I'm like, man, come on. So I get back up there, I get, go back upstairs to uh, my room, and I notice that I'm out of pain. I have no pain in my throat whatsoever. I'm not praying for healing this time. During this time, I'm praying. I'm just thanking God, praising God, and doing whatever you put in front of me. No pain whatsoever. I wait, because, you know, I was on um, Central Times. So I just waited long enough to where I didn't wake up Brenda in the middle of the night. I was so excited to tell her. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I called her up. I said, hey, I woke up with no pain this morning. No pain at all. I said, like, thank God healed me. She goes, heal everything? I said, I hope so. <laughs> You know, so when I went back to my doctor, I, set, I called my, my primary up and I set an appointment for him. And um, he's like, okay, we need to run some tests and this and that and everything. But all my numbers changed for the Hashimoto's. All the mass is gone. Come on. <laughs> Praise Jesus. I don't know if you know Hashimoto's disease and all the stuff that it causes in your body and the fatigue and everything else. It's, it's, it's kind of miserable be honest, and all the medication stuff, I'm off all that uh, um, completely, and my doctor was baffled. He knows me, he knows what I do, and he always asks questions. In the beginning, it's kind of like, I don't know about that, you know. Uh, they didn't know they're really blind. Like, that's what you tell me when blind eyes open up. Are you sure they're really blind? I'm like, I think a person could tell if they could see or not. But, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, the doctor might have misdiagnosed that one, you know. I mean, you know, and, and telling stories, and, and, you know, and so I, 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 I said, God healed me. He goes, well, I think your body reset itself. I asked him if that was a medical diagnosis. <laughs> your body reset itself. Um, I, I like to joke because he ended up quitting his job um, like a week later. So <laughs> I like to joke around. I haven't talked to him, but maybe it's true. But they, yeah, he just got completely baffled and he just quit. He said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, the point is, though, we, we need to surround ourselves in thanksgiving and praise. We have problems, and we still have problems. We still have issues. We still have financial issues, and we still have, you know, um, you know off and on stuff, and people are kind of scared of whether or not Delta is going to do this, or, Delta, or should we plan that? We should we do an event, not? I mean, we still have all those things happening. There's still stuff all around us. I mean, we don't have some kind of, you know, all life, you know, like, I mean, you, and, you know, we, we tend to think that sometimes about the, the leaders that we hear speaking because we don't tend to, and I apologize this because I did it for years, talk about when we're going through something. We talk about after we're just the victory part. How do we process? That's how I process, process through it. I just go to God. It's like, God, what am I doing wrong? How do I get in alignment to receive what your word says? How do we get into his presence? If you feel like you've been hitting a dry season, whatever your problem is, and that you take to God and you pray daily and you hit your prayer closet and you set everything up that you've heard to set up, right? And you find like, I feel like I'm just not hearing anything and I keep on asking God for, for provision for this or for the answer for it. Maybe you need to stop asking for it. Maybe you should start just going into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Maybe your walls need to be called salvation and your gates praise Amen. to end the destruction around you. I know for me, my mentality has completely changed. Even after all the miracles and everything I've seen, I know that I can learn and grow. It's a big part of my, my life is growing in the Lord. And sometimes growing in the Lord is just being quiet and saying, thank you, Lord. And learning how to thank him. If you find it awkward just to say, thank you, Jesus, and not add anything else to it, maybe you just say, there, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you find it awkward just to praise God in your home and just worship unto the Lord, even without music, without anybody seeing, maybe you need to start there. Start in a place of praise. Start in a place just praising your Father in heaven that loves you so dearly, that watches and sees you all the time and is waiting for you to enter his courts. So he could literally bless your life. Maybe as a church, as a whole, pastors and, and, and body together, and, and we want to reach the communities around us. We want to do all these events and all these things and all these outreaches. But you know what? What does the Bible say? Lift his name on high, and I'll draw men unto you. Lift him first on high. Start in praise. Start in Thanksgiving. Getting back to the heart. I think that's what God really did in this whole week. We had other plans and we tried to do our plans. And I'm, I'm, I'm big about planning, right? I've mentioned that many times. Project manager, I can't help it. But maybe when God wrecked it and changed things. And if you weren't here for some of the sessions, get the links. Do whatever they, ha they have set up back there um, to, to listen to them. I'm actually going to get them and listen back to them. I don't like listening to myself preach, but I want to listen back because there's messages that I gave that were not written. The Holy Spirit came and changed everything this weekend. Our focus, everything, to just be on holiness, repentance. And I feel like God wanted us to stop with praise and thanksgiving. What a timing for this. In the darkest of times, in the craziest of times, that we can reset and start a new season 